Hi, everyone. Welcome to our new episode of the First Friday Showcase. Last episode, we spoke about specific webinar events that were going on throughout uh, last month, as well as a topic of discussion on social media tips and how to execute your social media posts the best way possible. So that's, you know, getting the most engagement, getting the most outreach, wording it correctly, um, as well as you know, the best way possible to create your graphics and not having too much text in your graphics. During this episode, we'll talk about webinar events going out uh, throughout the month of um, October, along with a new topic of discussion, which will be around uh, market research. So, you know, small businesses that are, you know, starting a business in a location and want to know what's going on in the area so they can best execute their business plan or their products or services. So let's start off, you know, with the events going on this month. Uh, the first one we have is a um, business skills for success, which that will be taking place October 7th, and it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. And that will be presented by uh, some of our Kutztown University consultants and assistant director, uh, Izamag Torres Vigora, uh, along with our assistant director, Keisha Sturdivant. And uh, this business skills for success program is essentially it's a five week accelerated program for business owners that really want to take their business to the next level. Uh, the next event we have going on throughout this month is the post pandemic series for startups, uh, specifically around credit repair, and that's in a partnership with Univest Bank. Uh, this will actually be presented in Spanish. And that will be October 1st from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. And essentially, uh, this uh, series for startups will be help you maintain a good credit, as well as if you have a bad credit, it'll help you repair that. So um, that's nice to have both sides of the things to maintain it if you already have a good credit. And if you don't have such a good credit, um, they'll be talking about how to repair that. And this is a series. So this month, um, this month's episode will be October 13th, but there will be other webinars with different topics of discussion. Uh, there will be one in November as well as one on December, and you can find those on our uh, PAA, PASBDC eCenter website, uh, where all of our training events are located. Now we can move on to uh, our topic of discussion for this episode, which is market research. So Zach and I, uh, before uh, we started recording the episode, we were talking about specific things that businesses really want to think about when they're opening a location somewhere, because you never realize, um, you know, what's around you. So specifically speaking, you know, competitors that are in the area, the service and products that they offer versus the service and products that you offer, and also regarding pricing of those services and products, um, as well as mile radius of the amount of competitors. So you can do a 10 mile, five mile radius. Again, it depends where your business is located, how big the town is, neighboring towns, um, you know, the population of those towns as well. So all those factors can help you determine the, um, the mile radius uh, that you wanna choose to see how many amount of competitors are in the area. I'm not sure, Zach, if you have a couple of pointers uh, yeah. you wanna reach, um, speak about. Yeah, so I, I was just gonna say like, once you, pick a spot for your business, right? Like you're, you're there for brick and mortar stores, especially. I know a lot of right businesses nowadays, you know, you can, you can start out online and you can really run a successful business. You don't even need a shop. So mm -hmm. the mile radius, some of this stuff doesn't apply for that, but specifically we spoke about in Kutztown, um, there's two Chinese restaurants, right? Right. You have China King and Asian cuisine and one, really just kind of is way more popular just based on location alone. Right. So, so you have to look, you know, does someone have an advantage over you? Is it even worth entering that, that area or should right. you look elsewhere? But like you said, the location of it, visibility to your restaurant as well. One of them's located in a plaza that you have to enter versus another one's located right on the main street um, where actually a lot of student housing uh, is located. So that's one thing to think about is the visibility of your restaurant along with the location. Uh, another thing, that, another thing to think about is average customer age in the area. Uh, an example Zach and I were talking about uh, was if you were a small business opening up a store as a video game store, you mm -hmm. you would preferably want it to be in an area where your average customer age is lower. Not to say that you know older uh, older people don't play video games, but if you were to do a survey, uh, I would like to believe that you know the, the younger generations, twenty years old, even early thirties play tend to play more video games so for example again if you were a small business opening a video game store um having that average customer age in your area definitely would be a good piece of market research to have 
as well as another example I thought about was if you're an Italian restaurant, uh, again, what other Italian places are there within a 10 mile radius of where you're looking to, uh, you know, have that brick and mortar shop? Um, what are the dishes of those Italian restaurants? Maybe you can differentiate yourself from that restaurant in terms of dishes, or what are the prices of those dishes? So for example, if there's a already an Italian restaurant a couple blocks away and they have a chicken parm dish for, let's say like, you know, $17, and they have really good reviews, that's a good piece of information to know because you know the dish is good, you know the pricing of the dish, so now it's up to you, uh, the quality of your version of the dish and the pricing of your version of the dish um, because you know there are people out there that will pay more for better quality food, but uh, there are people out there that pricing is a big deal to them, so uh, it's good to know that, that a piece of information. Yeah, I would say the, the market research thing, it's, it's like, it's okay to have other competitors in the area Right. But the main thing, like you said, is differentiating yourself. Right. Okay, like offering uh, maybe the same stuff, but, you know, at a different price point, appealing to a different audience really uh, is key when you're competing with someone else. So whether right, it's right. price point or product offering. Right. And, and in terms of dishes, it, it's, a, it's a lot. Sometimes a lot of people look at the little things as well. So, again, going back to the example of Italian restaurant, if you have a chicken parm dish where it's solely just chicken parm, but your restaurant will offer it with a side of pasta or like a side salad. You know, people look at those things yeah. because, you know, they want to go somewhere where they can get the most food for their money. And not everyone. There will be people that are open to paying more for better quality food. But well, look at like and, Olive Garden, for example, they have all the, you know, the endless breadsticks. I don't know if they right. still do that stuff, but. That's one way to, to differentiate yourself, right? Right, right, exactly. It's it's just not the menu pricing. It's also the specifics of those dishes as well. Um, again, you know, what are the reviews of your competitors that are near you? Um, do they have good reviews online? Do they have a good showing as well as delivery service? You know, you have to look into that. If uh, again, if you're a restaurant opening up in your area, are a lot of your competitors nearby offering delivery service? Because again, you have to differentiate yourself from others. Are they offering takeout? Um, it's things like say, that. Looking at that reviews, like you said, that's a good way to exploit um, holes that you might find in your competitor's business, right? Like if someone's complaining or multiple customers are complaining about the same thing, you can say, okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to do it better because that seems yes. to be something that people are. Yeah, that's another saying. thing looking at reviews and if you see some reviews of your competitors that are negative that that's an opportunity for you to capitalize on that and make sure that you do the same thing but in a better way because mm -hmm. then you know that possibly could turn out to those customers not becoming your permanent customers uh, just because you're new you offer it you offer whatever dish or whatever product or service may be at a better quality so it's definitely you know the reviews of your competitors is a is a good piece of information to have as well yeah. And, and some other ways to find uh, information on uh, competitors or other businesses when you're doing market research is one thing that I would like to highlight is social media analytics. Right. So you can have social media accounts for your business before you have a, a store or even have a business established. So that's right. one way, you know, you can figure out your gender, where they're from, you know, what type of people are following you. And you can also kind of send out surveys and figure out what they want from you. Right, right. And another thing, another example is, let's say like if you're, I'm going back to the delivery service part of things. If you're a pizza shop that's opening up and you have a Domino's in the area, uh, people tend to know that Domino's likes to charge, I think it's a $3 delivery fee, um, which, you know, if someone's delivering, some people tend to have, you know, the, the idea of wanting the tip, but again, having that $3 fee and then having the tip afterwards next to, you know, you're like giving out six or $7. Yeah, it's um, like door versus, if you're, exactly. Yeah. And if, if you're, if you're a, um, if you're a pizza restaurant, um, having that option to do DoorDash, having that option to do Grubhub, or if you have your own delivery service and if you can afford it, having the option that it's free, obviously you can look at it, see if it's within a five, 10 mile radius, it's free. If it's a little longer then offer a fee, but knowing, uh, not only if your competitors offering delivery service, also knowing if there's a price to it, because then you can take that piece of information and differentiate yourself by, like I said, offering it for free. Um, if obviously if your business is, uh, can afford to do that. And like Zach mentioned, DoorDash, Grubhub, you know, th those are companies that you can partner with. And it's not even your own delivery drivers that you're paying a, uh, a wage to it's people that sign up for DoorDash or Grubhub. So that's, uh, 
that's another thing. If cost for delivery service is a big, um, a big issue or concern for you, considering those uh, third party delivery services as well. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how that works as a a business owner signing up for that. I think you do have to right. pay. I think you have to I'm pay. Sure, fee. I'm sure there's a fee, but I feel like, um, again, going down to the cost of things, if you are, if you do want to do that, let's say the cost of doing that is a little mm-hmm. higher than the cost of running your own delivery service. Well, those drivers, you're not paying them a wage. DoorDash and Grubhub is versus if you had your own delivery service, you have to think about the cost for that and the cost of wages. So it's just essentially just looking down to the nitty gritty and seeing how much money do I have to give out overall for those third party delivery services versus having my own delivery service Um, and pretty much going with the option that's um, that's uh, best available for you, because you also have to think about, again, DoorDash, Grubhub, your restaurant is being advertised on those pages versus if you have your own delivery service, that's your website and Google. Yeah, that's a whole nother marketing. So, you know, yeah, that's a whole nother marketing um, mechanism. Because again, if I go on DoorDash, Grubhub and just search pizza places, the chances of your shop coming up is pretty likely versus me just doing it on Google. Um, now, Google My Business can really help though with that. If you yes. uh, set up your business on Google My Business, that's a good way. Yeah, to go- yeah, yeah. I meant in terms of just generally Googling it. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. Like if you search pizza in Kutztown, you're going to get five or six, you know, pop-ups. Right. So, and as a new business, it's hard to rank on Google like that. So definitely. Yeah. Because then you have to think about, you know, SEO, search engine optimization, having a whole nother, keywords on whole your nother conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole nother conversation doing it on Google versus if you're already on Grubhub, DoorDash, if people, if there's customers out there that use that often and they're in the mood for pizza, they'll go on the app, search it up. And chances are you'll pop up on that search. Um, versus again on Google, you have to worry about SEO. So, uh, again, which is search engine optimization. So that, that's something definitely to consider. Um, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all I have on the market research side of things. If you have anything else you'd want to discuss, Zach. Yeah. I don't think I really have anything else to add. I know there's a lot of tools, uh, that are, that are available for market research. A lot of them are you know, paid for. And there's people who specialize in this type of stuff. I'm not sure if we have anyone at the SBDC, uh, but I'm sure we have had webinars or will have webinars. Yeah. And we do have the service of compiling market research reports. Um, We have specific staff members. I think it was a couple of student staff members that were in charge of compiling Mm -hmm. those market research reports for clients. So that's something we can definitely assist with. If you're like, if you're a business that is listening to this and you're actually thinking about having a brick and mortar location and want to know some background information or after listening to our discussion, realizing that market research is important. That's something that we could help out with. Yeah. Awesome. So other than that, I'm, I'm, uh, that's all I really have to say on that topic. Uh, so I'm going to go in and discuss the consultant corner for September. And that was, sorry, if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, Jasmita Saini, and she is a business consultant at Lehigh Valley. Uh, SBDC, and she specializes in research and analytical skills uh, for all of these social media platforms. So specifically Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know if I'm forgetting any, but that was last month's consultant corner. If you're signed up for our newsletter, you receive the the more in-depth discussion on, on those topics. And for October, I'm not sure who that is yet, but sign up and you'll be able to find out. I believe it goes out the last, I don't know, the last Tuesday. I don't know uh, for sure, but that's uh, it's pretty much all we have for this episode. Matt, if you want to go ahead and recap. Sure. So I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers for tuning into our new episode of the First Friday Showcase. Again, you know, if you're a business that uh, after listening to this episode, uh, really have some concerns and some questions about market research, or if you need some help pulling a report, we can definitely assist with that. Um, The next episode will be released on November 5th which is exactly a month from today. And again, that episode will include new webinar events that are being um, 
webinar or training events that are taking place throughout the month of November, along with a newly featured either consultant or another topic of discussion that Zach and I will be speaking about. And again, to view all of our training events, because some of the I mentioned two today, but we do have others going on throughout this month. I think we have like five or six. So if you want to view all of our events, please visit PASBDC.com ecenterdirect.com. And again, that is pasbdc.ecenterdirect.com. And on there, it'll show all the events going on uh, throughout this month. And not only for the Katsen SBDC, it will show it for the entire PASBDC network. So if there's something that you're interested in that is being hosted by another small business development center at another university, you can attend that as well. Um, but other than that, that's it for now. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, everyone. Thank you.